the yogis that go into a state of ecstasy, you know, they, you read about them, they, they do all these sort of things, I mean, they're actually, from what you read, I haven't seen it myself, but they are ecstatic, they, they, they're gone, you know. Is that because they have a, this divine connection, love connection with God, or is it because of a mind state? Um, there's a couple of things going on, actually, for them. One is that, um, if I can just illustrate it, and so here, here's the yogi on earth, right? With her soul, spirit body, material body. And I'm, I draw that just to remind you what you really are. Right? So here's their soul. That's the real them. Many, most spiritual people on spiritual paths in the eastern way of, of progressing are on the natural love path. So they're progressing towards the sixth sphere. What they're doing there is there is a spirit in the spirit world. Once this person gets beyond a certain part in their progression morally, there's a spirit in the spirit world who is already in the sixth sphere. So it's a sixth sphere spirit. And what they do is they project all of their emotions through the mediumistic connection into the person. And the person experiences their emotions like they're their own. So many six fear spirits feel this space, a uh, state of void bliss. They, you know, they often call it nirvana, or yeah. it's a void bliss. It's where bliss with a lack of desire, if you could call it bliss with no desire, in many cases. So it's not a desirous state. It's actually a state without desire in those cases. Right? But because you're now detuned from every sense that's going on within your own body and every emotion that's going on within your own body, what does it feel like? It feels like bliss, right? Because there's no negative experience whatsoever. Right? And this is how a six-year spirit feels. But they are not at one with God. I used to do a lot of meditating and I got into what I call the void, which was you'd meditate for a couple of hours and it seemed like a couple of minutes. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but I sort of stopped doing it because there's nothing there. That's right. Avoid. That's right. So, and, and and the people who meditate, they tell you that this is what you're aiming for. Yeah. There's nothing there. Exactly. There is nothing there. No. And time just goes by, and all of a sudden you wake up and you say, "Well, I know I was somewhere, but I was nowhere, and there's nothing there. What the hell was I doing?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it felt, it felt great, I think. I, yeah, exactly. I, I feel, I would feel, um, not trance-like, but a bit sort of drug-like when you come out. You shouldn't yeah. drive or anything. Because yeah. I'd be going, yeah. Yeah. For a while, but after a while, I thought all I'm doing is actually drugging my senses. Exactly. In a sense. You know? And that's exactly what most six fear spirits are actually doing. Mm -hmm. They're actually drugging their senses from the state of desire. Now, many of them, you know, decry desire. They actually belittle desire. The truth is that when you exercise all desires in harmony with God's love, you become passionate about every desire. Right? And every desire becomes blissful. So, so Buddha's actually totally wrong because he was on eliminate desire, detachment. I mean, I think he's misunderstood, but basically the way we understand it, that's the way... When you say totally wrong, he had a lot of teachings that are correct. Yeah. But that particular teaching, and Buddha himself was not a believer in God. He was a believer in the universe being God. Yeah, Buddhists don't believe in God. It, that's the basis of what they believe. Yeah. 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 And so, so they enter this state, and Buddha right at the moment is in a six-sphere state, in this state of almost total void. So in other words, like stagnant. Um, stagnant, can't progress from that place, and does not want to. What's their sex life? They don't have it. <laughs> they don't have any. No. So no. void is vacuum. No, they don't have any of it. It's, um, what, what's going on with them? And you, you can see this even with the, the people on earth and the reflection of the teachings. Like the Dalai Lama, what, does he have sex? No, he doesn't. <laughs> no, he, he actually practices celibacy. Right? Why is he practicing celibacy? Because he has this belief. What's the belief? Don't expand your energy. Well, no, the belief <laughs> is that sex is actually a desire, and all desires uh, are to be suppressed, are to, be suppressed mm -hmm. to be controlled. Mm -hmm. right? And so what he's done is he's detuned himself from sexuality. Now, does God expect you to detune yourself from something God created? Yeah, exactly. 
It doesn't well, make sense, right? This, this was a problem before because half the time you were taught that actually it was like, like the Gnostics and all this sort of stuff, they were taught that this is actually the devil's sphere and sex was designed to keep you here. And Yeah, and this is all the priesthood trying to control you and make you feel guilty. Yeah. The truth is that God created sex and God created sex all the way through the spheres. And was sex created to give you a heightened emotional release? Sex was created because sex is the act of creation. Yeah. Oh, yes. Sex is the act of creation. And so there will be a time when you're in the 22nd sphere state where you will be having sex constantly with your soulmate. 